Welcome back to another template design video and today we're going to look at the short which seems like a nice straightforward hole but there's a few subtleties to it that we're going to examine as well as how you can make this play in a really interesting way. So here we are at the 11th on Spilo River which is an upcoming project um, but this short hole is pretty much complete and it's probably my favourite I've built. So we're going to start by looking at this one before looking at some others. So what are we testing with this? Well the shot value is very simply precision with a wedge. Um, this is the sort of approach shot that you'd kill for on any other hole from the fairway. You've only got a short club in, you've got a perfect stance, and you're aiming dead at the flag. So how do we make it tricky? Well, the large-ish green um, tends to be separated into very distinct positions, um, and typically it'll involve a thumb print, which is probably a little bit clearer if I go about taking the putting grid off, so you can see this. And as you can see, you've got that really clear mounding where anything either side of the ridge and you're putting the other side is going to make it very tricky so therefore encouraging absolute precision once more um, a second aspect that is pretty common is that the greens tend to be encircled by bunkers not always but you often have a bit of an island green approach to this um, and that's seen certainly in some real life ones such as the 16th at Sleepy Hollow or 6 at MGLA just two that come to mind. The actual putting surface is quite large um, but the aim is that we're not just rewarding people for getting to the green, we're trying to make them take on very specific pin positions. And with that in mind we're going to leap back into the designer view and you can see the different pin positions and the problems they're going to pose. For the ones on the extreme left, well we're making you take on a slightly larger carry to the bunker. You've got this little bit of a diagonal indentation here. Um, but even with the green contours, you want to be absolutely stiff in order to hold hold the putt because a little bit short and you've got a nasty putt up some pretty tricky slopes. There's a bit of a backstop that you can use, but you don't want to be leaving the ball on that downhill slope or again you've got a nasty little putt. Um, if you're going for the one in the middle, obviously potential for a hole in one, but within the thumbprint which you can use as a backstop, if you're slightly long, you're facing a really tough putt over it and trying also not to then run down and there's this little dip just in front. Um, on the thumbprint what this is traditionally used for is that it affects every other pin position so with the exception of this added one over here for this pin you're worrying about bouncing and leaving it short and then you've got the same difficult challenging putt there. Um, then with this one I added one final little pin because I quite liked it, the green felt like it looked a little bit too small so we added one little kind of capish pin all the way over here which again has its own little backstop but you've really got to go for it and pretty much missing anywhere on this is going to be really tough um, and leaving it up here is no picnic either because you've got a nasty little putt down. So that's basically what the short is. It's a very tough green, you've got a very short club in hand it's just saying you've got to be brave and hit a really good shot they, they need to look visually intimidating and they tend to be on one of the most beautiful parts of the property so I'll look to give it very good lighting and a great setting um, overlooking this water is a bit of a nod to the Sleepy Hollow short. So we can look at a couple of others as well as how you might tweak or tailor this design. The next one we're going to look at is the 16th at Fisher's Island and this is in fact a real course that's been brought into the game um, and again it benefits from an absolutely stunning setting um, the little waterway in front adds drama even for a short hole this looks pretty menacing with a large green you still have the bunkers all the way around the green ringing it um, and giving it that kind of island green sort of feel but in actual fact it's quite a large green and relatively friendly you'll notice that this one doesn't feature that thumbprint but if we take the designer show off for a moment you can see that the contours are just very consistent and very tricky and you don't want to be beyond the hole. It's got a little bit of an Eden about it as well in that sense in that if we're having a downhill putt that's going to be pretty nasty. See again you're encouraging that absolute precision with a wedge. There's then that little capish sort of pin right the way over here which is an absolute menace and will be very tough to get close. So certain things are very much optional. You don't have to have the thumbprint, many of them do, um, but still being aware of those things that you are trying to test and generally if you can keeping it in that really good setting. The other thing is considering where and bouts in the round that you want to put this. If you're thinking of sawgrass and it's 17th, 
a short par 3 coming down the stretch can be a great scoring opportunity, but also given that there's often danger in play, can be one of the most disastrous holes if you get it wrong. and can make, make a fool out of you pretty quickly if, say, you're in the bunker, then hacking out long, putting off the front, missing your chip back. You can see how it could quickly wrap up, rack up scores, even if you're only slightly off. Back at one of our go-to courses in this series, and we're looking at the 18th at Rainer Ridge now. And you can see from miles away that it's a giant green, really large thumbprint that's again going to influence all of these putts. And look at pin one, so tucked right on the left, and you're going to be trying to go as far left as you possibly can and leaving the ball short. So you are, even on this big of a green, your actual target area is very, very close to the edge of it. There's all sorts of interesting pin pinning opportunities, and this thumbprint is huge. And the benefit of having a really large green on a really short hole is you can make some very big, bold contours with it. As discussed, we can see that it's kind of ringed with the three bunkers, giving it that island green sort of approach. Um, and it's a really fun 18th finishing on this um, this shot. Normally, I don't think a par 3 as an 18th works well, but I think with this type of a par 3, where there's r real clear danger, and also a scoring opportunity can work really nicely. We're looking here now at the 14th that energizes Whiskey Trails and it's another stunning looking short hole which is not long but enjoys the best spot on the course overlooking three, two or three other courses I think. Um, what's special about this one is you've got this, what he does so well of these two little bunkers that obscure the group view of the front of the green so it puts a little bit of uncertainty as to where you should be landing it. Additionally, this whole green runs from front to back, so if you look at the elevation at the moment, 24 down versus 27, so 3 feet of elevation change just between the front and the back of the green in some 20 yards is huge. Um, and in actual fact, as a result, the front pin is going to be your toughest, or the front two pins, I believe there's one even shorter than this. Um, Additionally, you're going to be exposed to the wind and you're also hitting down some 25 feet. So it's not an easy shot even with no wind because you have to be considering everything that is going on. But hopefully, and then you get this stunning view looking over it, hopefully that's a decent shot. But even then, it's not necessarily an easy putt because there's subtle breaks all over this green. It's another really good example of the short. Now back at Springbrook and another perfect example of a short, again around that 130 yard distance, which in game is a really good distance as well as it can be between clubs for some people or forcing a pitch. You've got the little gentle thumbprint at the front which is still kind of flowing off, so even within this thumbprint you don't want to be too much above it or you've got that downhill part. So it's still encouraging you to take on this false front which is another added little feature that this short has. Um, it's got that sort of cape-ish exterior that we looked at on Sapilo as well. And in terms of variety of pin positions, you can probably have one in the thumbprint, one back here, and then a final one that's either just beyond the thumbprint or on this little plateau short here. I think the main thing with this one is just to try to have fun with the green contours um, because you know that you're generally asking people to hit a very precise shot and the length of hole is so short that you're really expecting that they will get it relatively close and a bad shot which I'd suggest this one kind of is is still going to leave you a relatively decent look at birdie obviously it can change with wind conditions but the other final thing I'd urge you to do before we go into a summary is can be mindful when you're practicing putts where are these putts tricky from so with this one I've hit an average shot and I've gone long and I've got a putt that's really going hard forwards past and off the green once it gets past the pin. So I'm going to have to be pretty careful not to push this too far. And we're just giving it a gentle little tap there. And even then watch it just trickle on by and I feel like I've hit that half the distance. So not necessarily an easy putt even when you're within 10 feet is usually a good rule of thumb. So that's our short hole and there really are so many that I could have picked from that I thought I'd finish by doing a little bit of a montage of different holes just to show the beauty and variety there is on offer. I am a firm believer in having one of these on every single course because it just tests something a little bit different. We're encouraging and expecting everyone to hit the green. It's just the putting and what happens next that will be tricky. And you obviously want to have real danger in play for anyone who does miss the green because with a club that small into a green relatively large, you shouldn't be missing the green and should be punished if you do.
And I think the final thing to add is simply that it should be a beautiful hole on one of your best pieces of land. I hope that this, as ever, has been really useful, that you've picked up some ideas on what you might do, and we'll see you again soon.